Hey, what's up, Internet? Today we're going to get this 4 terabyte Western Digital Easy Store hard drive to store all of our ROMs from our Raspberry Pi 3. Now, one of the big things people say is, you know, once you start getting over 128 gigabyte SD cards, they start going up in price significantly. So people want to save a little bit of money. So what we're going to do using Motion Blue version 4, I made an awesome video on that and how to build your own version of this. Or there's plenty of pre-done images using this front end of how do we stop storing our ROMs on our micro SD and we store them on this hard drive. Now, first off, you do you need a hard drive that does power itself like this one here? It has a power cord. You have these little portable hard drives here where just the power comes through the USB and the data transfer. Unfortunately, the USB on the Pi does not have enough power to power these properly, so you'd have to get an external power. They do make a V cable for these, so it is possible. It just needs its own power. Um, so all you need, like I said, we're, you need Motion Blue, Raspberry Pi 3, your controllers, and a hard drive. I'm going to teach you everything else you need to go. So first step, we have some stuff to do on the computer. Let's go into the computer. All right, everyone. First thing you want to do is plug in your hard drive into your computer. You see I have it here. This is H. Let's go ahead and properties to show you. I've got 3.63 terabytes. Uh, you do need to go ahead and, and hit format. This needs to be an NTFS file system for this to work. So I'm just going to do a little quick format here. Bada bing, bada boom. This should be fairly quick, format complete, thank you very much. Go into here, you should just have here, this information here. Go ahead and go new, right click, new, folder, and we're gonna call this PyROM. So that's what we need to do. So we, we have done this step. So you're all done setting up your hard drive. The other thing you wanna do since you're on the computer is there'll be a link in the description for the RetroPie toolkit. Um, it's gonna come in a little zip like this, you unzip it, and here it is here. By the way, this video is made possible by Forrest. He, his channel is Easy Hacks. I'm gonna go ahead and link his channel in here below. Um, this can be done not only on the hard drive, but on a USB thumb drive as well. And uh, he's the one that really hooked it up with this process. Uh, it's fairly simple. And with these scripts that he's provided here, it's a double click and you got this thing up and running. So next thing we want the, the you do need to be on wi-fi by the way if you don't know how to connect your pi to the wi-fi or plug it into an actual cable i have many videos uh how to do that on my channel uh as well to get that that you do that is a prerequisite so make sure you have that as well okay so we got the hard drive set up we have the script here we have our pi on the wi-fi okay in this step i removed the usb from my computer and now the usb is connected into from the hard drive to one of the Pi's USB slots there, okay? Okay, now that we've got the hard drive hooked up to the Pi, we're gonna go ahead and double click this. External drive detected, performing check. All right, that's a good sign. External drive checks out. All right, it's working. We got a good external drive on here. Okay, SSH, they SSH into the Pi. They, so they're in the Pi now. The drive has been expanded and your system will now halt. Detach your external drive and plug it into your computer. So it just said it was going to halt. And then my screen turned off here. Uh, so now what we want to do, it just turned off the Pi basically. So now we can go ahead and remove this from our Pi and then put it back into our computer over here and uh, now let's go back into the computer and I'll show you what what the what the pie made okay so we just put this easy store hard drive back into our computer here and we have that pie remember we created this folder but all we did was create a blank folder so let's go see what when we go inside now now we have this new folder called ROMs we never did this before and it's in there now and look at that all the different systems right here on our Pi. Now, once you do this setup, you can no longer use the Pi to transfer ROMs over the network. The way you're going to transfer your ROMs now is by plugging in your USB into your computer and then plugging and then dragging them onto the external hard drive and then putting the external hard drive back on the Pi. So let's go ahead and uh, transfer over some ROMs. So now we have on one side here on the left, I have a uh, 
the Rays image, all the arcade games and things that are on Rays. Let's take like PlayStation. I think there's like 25 PlayStation games, 12 gigs. So normally it'd take us a lot of time to get all these PlayStation games, but let's just go ahead and copy those over. PSP, PSX, I mean, PSX Control V. Look at that, 120 megs per second. So something that typically would have taken a day <laughs> through the Pi Wi-Fi uh, is gonna take me about two minutes through this transfer process. All right, and the next ones are Super Nintendo. So let's go SNES. This one should go really fast. Do you see this? Now we're gonna eject the Easy Store and then plug it back into our Pi and boot up our Pi. Okay, YouTube, so we've now got our hard drive all set up and I transferred over those Nintendo games. As you can see here, we now have 791 Nintendo games. Now, I haven't got the snaps on there yet. I need to redo that next, but I did transfer over all the games, and it is working perfectly. PlayStation, I should have 25 games. There they are. Came up just fine. And Super Nintendo, I transferred over all the Super Nintendo games as well. The loading is pretty fast. This is USB 3.0. And uh, really, the, the thing that's I have three terabytes of available space right now. Think about all the PlayStation games I can have on this image. It's huge. The potential is unlimited. All right. So as you can see, everything is running just hunky dory here. No issues whatsoever. If you disconnect the Pi, if you disconnect the Pi, um, your ROMs will just not show up. It should still boot because it's still running off the SD card. Super simple, super easy to do. This should work on most images as long as you follow the directions as is. This is really cool because I can have like a thousand PlayStation games, no problem. We already saw that PlayStation maxes out right around 280 on a 128 gigabyte image. So I can have over a thousand, multi-thousand PlayStation games and almost every other system available. So this is one method on how to expand your space and have things stored on your hard drive. There is other scripts you can run with this and store more than just ROMs, but for this video, we got it on our ROMs, we expanded it. So for those that want the images with 20, 30, 40, 50,000 games on it, this is definitely one way you can do it. If you like this video, please give it a little thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next one.